hi ho, hi ho, off to the shop we go. The other shop, not my shop, the technician shop. Ones that have all the fancy tools and uh, knowledge. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in my truck. My engine light is off right now, but uh, <laughs> don't let that fool you. It'll pop back on eventually. It goes on, then it goes off, then it goes on, then it goes off. My stop engine light is off, so that's why we're moving. Just gonna try to get down the road to the shop. Well, the truck's been dropped off. I told them at the shop there at the service desk what issues I was dealing with. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what they, uh, what they find out. They've got all the tools to plug in and check all the faults and codes. No faults were active now when I parked it there, of course. So they're going to plug into it. There'll be no active faults, but they'll be able to go into the history and see all of the uh, previous faults. And that red stop engine light should pop up there for them too, and they can diagnose what caused that. And hopefully, uh, well, maybe they'll just replace all the sensors that need replacing. Maybe they'll replace all the wiring. I'm just speculating at this point. I have no idea. I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that it's not too expensive. But we're back in the car right now. We've got a little guy right back there. And Britt just ran inside. We're at a health food store in Steinbach. She's uh, got to get a few uh, a few meds here, I believe, or a few, a few products anyways, because uh, believe it or not, it's time to start the next round of IVF. Next month. Next month is when it all happens. Uh, Britt's going for another egg retrieval in February uh, 2024, if you're watching this later in the future. Uh, it's, it's that time again. Very excited. So, all of the uh, meds and uh, <coughs> meds and doctor's appointments, they're all starting to wind up right now. Coenzyme Q10 with ubiquinol. $78.39 for 20 days of vitamins. And that's just one vitamin. That's crazy. I was just telling them that uh, our next round of IVF is getting underway. Yeah. yeah. Another Egg day retrieval. or two and then uh, start the priming meds. Egg retrieval next month and then the transfer probably what the month after? Probably April, I would assume. Sometime around then. So those of you who have been following us through the last IVF, that led to him. Little sleepy guy back there. Yeah, he's awake. Oh, oh, he's awake now. Yeah. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> We're going for another one. They turn out pretty good when you go this route. Hand picked by the professionals. Scientifically picked. <laughs> Double A embryo. Morning, everyone. So yesterday, if you watched the video, uh, we were having problems with my truck. Uh, engine light's been popping on and off, and the stop engine light came on and then went off. Then the engine light came back on for a while and then went off. So uh, today, I've got to bring the truck into the shop and get the technicians to see what the problem is and uh, figure out what the solution is going to be. Let's hope that solution will be simple and not too expensive. Is the polar vortex still out there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's still out there. Come on guys, you gotta be quick. Diesel? Diesel? There you go. No messing around guys. The polar vortex will get you. So it's cold. Cold again. Oh, but we're almost through this. It's supposed to warm up next week again. This happens every year. People act surprised every year. Oh look, it's cold again. We're in Manitoba. Ah! And then in summertime it gets really, really hot and then everyone's freaking out. Ah! Like, yeah, it's the seasons. They change. It's the weather changes. Welcome to Manitoba. You get four distinct seasons. We're in the worst one right now. Oh, are you done, little buddy? Oh, am I in your way? Roadblock. Okay. Let's get your little paws inside. 
There you go. You done too? All right. So I'm hoping it'll be something simple with the truck. Uh, you never know. That stop engine light yesterday really. Uh... Oh, I'm about to get inside. I don't want to heat the hole outside. That stop engine light really freaked me out. Because uh, I know it must be a bad connection or a faulty sensor or something. Because the truck runs just fine. And the engine light would pop on. And when the engine light was on, it would run just a little bit rougher. And then the light would go off again. And the codes would clear. Or the faults would clear. And then the truck would be perfect again. So I don't know what's causing it to go on, off, on, off. I guess we'll find out. Chevy, come on. Get over here. It's cold. Come on. In you guys go. We can go back out in a little bit again. It's okay if you didn't finish. We'll go eat some breakfast and we'll come right back out. But I'll let you guys know what uh, the verdict is. But, uh, eh, it's still going to be a good day. It's not the best. It's not, not even close to the best. But at least we've got diesel here, right? And Chevy. And the wieners. Yeah, you guys make me feel better, right? Of course you do. I think you are kind of stressed for you. Kind of stressed. I feel it too. Yeah. I feel something over here. I don't know what I'm, what's going on, guys. He's old. I, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Diesel, thank you for always being there. It's my job, man. I may be old, but I still got it. Just know I'm gonna have to clear the highways back here for the boys and clear the driveway before we drive on it. You always got to clear the snow off your driveway. Here's a pointer that I've learned over the years. Don't drive when, when it snows on your driveway, don't drive over it. As soon as you drive over it, it packs it down onto the concrete and then it freezes onto the concrete. It's very hard to get it off, and you got ice on your driveway. Shovel your driveway first before you drive on it, even before you walk on it, if you can. And it'll just slide right off the pavement. And you got a nice clear driveway all winter. You probably knew that already. I took me till I was almost 36 to figure that one out. <laughs> well, after that whole debacle, <clears throat> I got old blue back. They replaced the, the cam and crankshaft sensor, speed sensor. Just like uh, I thought that would need to be done. Though I had absolutely no confidence in what I was saying. I'm not a technician. <laughs> but from what I read on Google, sometimes Google's right, apparently. So they checked that out. They checked out all the lines and everything. These are certified technicians who are trained to work on Peterbilt Kenworth trucks. So I trust them. It's the only shop I go to is PBX Truck Service in Blumenort. They're the only ones authorized to work on this truck. They do amazing work. I vouch for them 110%. So when they tell me that that's the issue that they think it is, okay, we'll go with that. I took it into my shop here overnight. We're about to go hook onto our trailer, go to Kenora, and we'll see if that fixed the issue. Uh, we'll see if that uh, engine fault comes back or not. A little bit of a delay in my week. Cost me a few thousand dollars in lost revenue. The repair itself was uh, approximately around $500 with labor included. So it was only a couple of hundred dollar part and uh, two hours of labor. And depending on where you are, uh, labor is different, uh, labor costs. I believe it's $130 an hour. I don't want to say that for sure. I should go, I should double check that before I tell you what their rates are, but it's, you know, it's, it's the average mark for, uh, uh, for hourly shop rates around here. It's, it's, they're, they're pretty good. You can find some that may be a little bit lower, but uh, like I said, these are certified technicians that are certified and trained to specifically work on Kenworth and Peterbilt trucks. And they do really good work. They get me in right away. 
like when the engine fault came on, I, I had my truck there the same day and it went in the following day. So the very next day it went in the shop very often. Now my experience when I was leasing a Volvo, you guys remember that? I'm not a fan of, of Volvo. I won't be running any ads for them. We'll say that. Decent trucks, very comfortable to drive. I get it. People like them. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I have to say that I fall into the Kenworth and Peterbilt camp pretty firmly. But uh, a big part of that is the service at the service center in Winnipeg and Volvo Winnipeg. If this was a Volvo and I had to bring it to the certified Volvo technicians in Winnipeg, guaranteed my truck would have been sitting out in their lot for at least a week before they even bring it in to look at it. At least a week. Unless if they've changed that over the past couple of years, let's give them some benefit of the doubt and maybe they've gotten better. But that was very slow to get in there. Whereas this truck was in the very next day and the day after that, look at that, I'm leaving on a trip, ready to go. So that plays a big part in it as well. Uh, the service you get from people forms uh, future business. And believe me, there's a lot of business in fixing trucks. It's very expensive to fix trucks. And if you're good at it, you can make a lot of money doing it, I'm sure. So if you treat your customers well, they'll keep coming back. You know they will because trucks always break. You know they'll keep coming back. And uh, PBX does an absolutely fantastic job of that. I just want to give them a special shout out here right now again. Uh, they're located in Blumenort, Manitoba. And... The only people that work on this truck. I, I trust them. I am a little bit nervous still uh, heading out. Because, you know, nobody's perfect. Nobody like, has all the answers right away. Sometimes with these issues with engine lights popping on, it's like a tree that you got to go down all the branches to figure out where the fault is, right? So they fixed one. You know, it's very possible there could be another one. And I want to put that little disclaimer on there that if this didn't fix my problem, I'm not going to be all mad at the service technicians that worked on my truck. I, I don't like it when guys do that because they did fix one problem. They did fix the problem. Hopefully that's the only problem. Hopefully there's nothing else in there that's causing issues. So this is going to be a test run this trip to Kenora down to Minnesota. We're staying close to home. Um, hopefully... All of my issues have been fixed now. If not, well, move on to the next branch of that tree, right? And try to figure out where that issue is. <laughs> Electronics. Am I right? Electronics. Remember the days when you just like put diesel fuel in the tanks and they just went straight into the engine and out the stacks? And that was it. <laughs> Oh, the glory days. I didn't get to enjoy those days too much because I was the next generation. Well, that's like my dad's days. When uh, he was younger, probably around my age, the trucks were so much simpler. So much simpler. Now, like this is a 2008. So it's, it's not as complicated, but the new trucks? I don't want to own one of those new trucks because there's so many sensors and wires and everything that can go wrong all the time. But, uh, you know, they have their perks as well. Yeah. We have arrived and there are, there's a few people ahead of me. That's okay, it usually moves pretty quick. So it's about a five and a half to six hour drive on this load. And I'd like to unload today, but I have to be there by 4 p.m., which means I have to leave here by 10. It's 7.30 right now in the morning. I got going early today. I left home at uh, quarter after four in the morning. Got the truck ready, got hooked up. Now we're in Kenora. I've got to get myself all uh, geared up here. All in my Sunday vest, get my gloves ready. My other gloves ready. I just have two pairs. In case one pair gets too wet, then I can come switch them up for a nice warm pair. And my bigger boots, because I have to have boots here that cover my ankles. So I'm going to get all suited up, get loaded, and uh, let's see what we can do. Hopefully we can get unloaded. So far, knock on wood, so far the truck 
running beautifully with no codes. Again, knock on all the wood you can find everywhere. Everywhere. I don't have any real wood in here, but well, we didn't get out of here as soon as we wanted to. People in front of me were too slow tarping, took too long. So we'll deliver this first thing tomorrow morning. The time getting out of here now. Oh man, I've been here a few hours already. It is what it is, right? That's trucking. I've got to try to uh, make up for that lost revenue for my truck being in the shop earlier this week. find ourselves some shiny pennies somewhere. We're lucky we'll find ourselves a shiny nickel. from the US. Huh. Let's see how long this one's gonna be. I know that people in Europe and other parts of the world are always amazed at how long our trains are here. This is normal for us.
Minnesota. I thought you were going to be warmer than Manitoba. I wouldn't mind going even further south to get away from this cold. I threw out the idea to the load god saying, hey, I'm willing to go south if you got something for me. place to stop just for a quick quick little coffee break I'm gonna run in here brush my teeth because where we're stopping down in Brainerd I'm not gonna have a bathroom right there so let's we'll take care of that now and uh, get ourselves all ready like I said only an hour and a half left and we're at our destination and then I'm just going to park there at the gate. And we'll see if there's anyone else parked there. If not, I'll, hopefully I'll be the first one in in the morning. Uh, they open the gate at 7 a.m., I believe. They start unloading at 7.30. I don't have any uh, reload lined up yet. But, you know, I'll shoot a message in at 7 a.m. when they get there back home. And uh, let them know, hey. Oh, I put this on wrong, didn't I? I always do these up wrong. I already called in today, I think I told you already. Subtly begging for work. Not so subtly. Not so subtly begging for work. Please, I want to work. I want to work. Give me work. Please find me work to do. I need the money. I need the money. It either takes forever to button this thing up. Man. All this just to go inside and maybe grab a coffee. Use the bathroom. Stretch my legs and then get right back out there. It's a lot of work. That's what winter is, right? In summertime, it's nice. You oh, you get uh, to where you're stopping, pull the brakes, turn the truck off, jump out. You're good to go. Now, in wintertime, you got to bundle everything up so that you don't die. Because it's minus quadrillion out there. Okay. 
that's enough of that. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. I gotta go inside. tonight so that in the morning when I wake up I'm ready to go it's also colder out it's minus 16 Celsius here in Brainerd Minnesota so I want to make sure that my tanks are full of fuel before I go to bed for that reason as well just to keep the chance of moisture building up away Put some good old Casey's juice in here Okay, let's see what is the price here for me today? What do you want for this? Three dollars and forty four cents US per gallon It's not too bad. Let's do some math here real quick. You guys ready? First of all, we're gonna go. Oh, it's three forty three nine. So three forty three nine USD to CAD. Uh, oops, 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 oops. There we go. So it's four dollars and sixty four cents Canadian per gallon. And you go four sixty four divided by three point seven eight five. We're looking at a dollar twenty two point six. A dollar twenty-three Canadian per liter. Everything's said and done. Not bad. Uh, the price of diesel fuel back home is about a dollar forty right now. We're saving fifteen to twenty cents per liter, and I'm probably gonna fill up about five hundred liters tonight. That's good. Well, I'm not really saving it. I'm just keeping it. My money to begin with. God bless the U.S. and their cheaper juice. There's the gate. First in line. Actually, we're the only ones in line. There is nobody else here. So, between 6.30 and 7, they get here, these gates open. And I can go in there and start taking my tarps off. And then by 7.30, they should be unloading me. And I should be out of there by probably around like 8 o'clock. Uh, that's if everything goes well and according to plan. But remember, this is trucking. Nothing ever goes according to plan. But sometimes it can be pretty close. I'm going to go to bed right here. I have 11 hours to wait until the gate opens. Load is looking pretty good back here still, as it should. It is all still here, all still wrapped. The back end here is a little bit loose because uh, the lifts here at the, at the back are actually smaller than the two rows at the front. So it made my tarps look a little bit funny there, but we made it. It worked. <laughs> It's pretty cold out there. Just gonna see if I can get my bunk heater started. Let's make sure that my engine heater still works. Everything's gonna work in the morning. I uh, got my frame inspected the last, uh, about two weeks ago. Like my whole frame on my truck, just to make sure the integrity of the frame is still good. Did I tell you this already? I'll tell you again if I if I did. But uh, the, the frame is all good to go. But all of the paint has come off from the cab back. So what I've gotta do now is, uh, coat it in a, a rust sealant. Uh, I, I came up with this, or came out, I Googled it before and uh, came up with a solution. I'm just gonna go look for it. KBS coatings, it's a rust seal. That's one brand that I've found so far. I'm curious to know if you guys know of any other good brands. Pretty much a, a rust sealant that you can pretty much just paint right over the rust. That's uh, 
what I'm looking for because I'm going to have the whole frame sandblasted, stretched a little bit and painted in hopefully I can make it last about two years. We'll get that done then. With that extra distance or with that extra space on my frame, I can put an APU on there. I'll have room to mount that then. And on the other side, I want to mount uh, chain hooks for my tire chains with a lock over top of it so that they're out in the open. Right now they're in one of my storage boxes and I want to be able to have them out in the open where DOT can see them, that I have them on me so that they never question, oh, does this guy have chains? Like if I do, if I do need them. And they're just easier and more organized that way. So that'll give me room for that. It'll give a smoother ride as well. And in my opinion, it'll look better. Just uh, about 24 inches longer. But that's in about a, a year or two, maybe two years if we can. So until then, I've got to seal up that frame. And uh, from what I've read and understood, uh, I've got to clean the frame first really well, or the section that I'm going to paint or work on, clean it down very good. Uh, there's special uh, formulas that I that they sell as well that I can use to clean it off, make sure it's all perfect, ready to go, and then you just brush it on. Just right on there, and it seals the frame, and it seals the steel so that moisture and oxygen can't get to it and cause it to rust. And that'll make it last as long as I need it to, right? I have to, I have to do that like this summer, like in the next half a year or so, uh, get that done just for a little bit of peace of mind so that my frame doesn't start rusting too much, right? Because it's exposed, it has all the paint that came off. Just want to take care of this truck. That's, uh, that's my big thing. I want this truck to go a long time yet, and in order for that to happen, I've got to take care of it, and that's one of the most important things. Because if you don't got a frame, you don't got a truck. <laughs> or you got to buy whole new frame rails. God, I guess that could be an option. I don't even know how expensive that would be. I'm, I'm assuming that would be very expensive, because it has to be custom made, right? I don't know. That's the plans, though. Like I said, plans very rarely ever happen according to plan, but we'll get it done. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. We went from home to Kenora, got loaded. It took too long to get loaded because everyone in front of me was taking forever to tarp and they're hogging the tarp station. Uh, so I didn't get out of there in time to get here and unloaded today. So I'm going to get unloaded in the morning first thing. And then we'll see. See what, we'll see where we can rush off to next and try to make some money. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget, uh, I've now opened up memberships on my channel here. If you want early access to the videos, if you want members-only content when I make videos, some, some are just for members only, and if you want special recognition in the comment section, you get a special little tab by your comment. You can click the Join button on my page and become a member. Uh, I had these memberships on Patreon for about 10 years, but I didn't like it that it was separate from my channel. So what I'm doing is I'm moving all of the memberships that, I, that, that are over on Patreon and I'm moving them here onto the YouTube platform so that everything's in one place. It's a lot easier for me that way and it just keeps everything together. And that way you also get special recognition as a member in my comment section. Uh, videos will not change for any of you though. Videos are still free to watch when I release them. Most of the time the videos are put together and uploaded like a few days early at least. And... Uh, I figured they're just sitting there on the internet. Why not offer them through a membership if you want to watch them early? If you don't want to, that's fine. But, uh, and if you are a member on Patreon, just, uh, I'm going to be shutting down that page in the next several months or so, winding it down over there and uh, bringing everybody over here. So if you want to become a member and support the channel, you can uh, click that join button on my page below my video or on my main channel page. Thanks for watching. Please stay safe out there, everybody. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video.